Yeah. You're welcome to this special broadcast tonight. Yes. And I want to let you know that this is a late night broadcast, but I believe that, um, you know, God has placed something in my heart for you. And what I'm going to share with you tonight will be very, very, very instrumental in your spiritual journey. Amen. And I'm going to give you some some important you know tools today that you can be able to use um, to identify certain things in your life and now um, I know that for many in uh, in the faith they have looked at the issue of omens as a negative or just solely um, when you speak on this subject it is looked at as you know um, demonic or devilish yeah. But we need to go back to the Word of God and really take our time to investigate certain matters or else we'll be committing a great crime mm. to push things off to the devil that does not belong to the devil. Wow, wow. And the reasons I'm handling these topics, and by the time we are done today, you're going to find out why. Yes. Um, because there's so many things happening in the world today. I believe that if we are not equipping God's children with spiritual tools, they will become victims of the crisis that take place in, in life mm. and in the world. And God did not want anyone, any one of his children, to move and to operate without signs. Yes. It is very important that we look into this matter. So, in the first place, what are signs? What are omens? What are signs? What are omens? Let's Please go. share this broadcast with five people, tag somebody, let somebody know we are live right now. Amen. What are signs and what are omens? When we place signs and omens together, we are looking at a very, very uh, um, special uh, group and a very special category of spiritual acts or spiritual arts. Mm. The reason is because um, I'm not looking at the broad spectrum of signs as in, you know, just having uh, um, um, certain um, things happen, you know, or just having certain, let's say you're walking by and you see, um, how do you call it? You see a, um, a post board and the post board has a sign. I'm not dealing with that kind of sign today. Yeah. All right. I'm not dealing with the signs you see on your street. I'm not even dealing with, you know, um, common signs that we see, you know, about certain things in life, signs of sickness or whatever the case may be. I'm looking at a certain spiritual art that deals with omens. Okay. All right. I'm looking at a certain spiritual uh, manifestation of omens. Wow. So we're looking at the work of signs in reference to omens. Okay. Let's go, Prophet. Are you still there? We're here. So a sign is simply a happening that has a hidden meaning or message. Mm. A happening that has a hidden meaning or message. And then an omen speaks of what is about to happen based on that sign. Mm deep you understand what i'm saying yes sir so a sign in reference with omens it deals with a happening right. that has a hidden meaning or message okay and then an omen refers to or speaks of what is about to happen based on the sign yes are we clear on that oh very clear now typical omens that we generally see uh, omens concerning animals. For example, when you see an owl that came and landed on maybe your fence yeah. or landed on your house, typically right. many people reference it to be a bad omen if right. an owl visits your house at a certain time. True. And usually these are what is known as ominous signs that are given to men wow. to project a certain happening that is about to take place. Yeah. Are you still there? We're here. And it can come by way of Satan. It can also come by way of God. And you must understand that these signs are not 
um, they, they are not in an ordinary sense. These are supernatural manifestations of yes. signs. Yes. It is not in an ordinary sense. For example, you know, a dove coming to visit you or a bird coming to land on your window. These are all ominous signs. You have signs concerning the owling of dogs. And um, when we get into some deep matters of the spirit, I will speak to you concerning why dogs owl at a certain time, howl at a certain time of the night. Wow. Those are ominous signs. Those are omens. Oh, wow. wow. That makes sense. And then you have the rooster crowing at night. Right. You also have signs like, you know, even with your own physical body, like when you bite your tongue. Okay. These are typical omens. And these things happen to us, but we don't know their hidden message or meaning. Yeah. Then even hiccups can become an omen. Oh, wow. Depending on the time it is happening. Mm. Hiccups. Yes. Then you have, um, you know, <laughs> sneezings. When you sneeze, certain times when you sneeze, for example, if you are not having a cold and you find yourself sneezing three times in a row, it is an omen. Hmm. It has a hidden message. It could be good, it could be bad. Jesus. And then when you see a red colored butterfly, that's an omen. Wow. I'm just listing a few for you to understand that these things are happening around you yeah. all the time. Yeah. But because of a lack of spirituality in the Christian faith, we have pushed these things off and made it seem like it is not a part of our spiritual experiences. Yeah, we have. And so yeah. we have put many, many of God's children in harm's way because we are not those who are spiritually discerning. Yes, very true. When the Bible speaks of being spiritually discerning, it is not only talking about having the ability to hear the voice of God hmm. or to discern things from your spirits. Being spiritually discerning has to do with omens right. as well. Right. Where you are able to pick up a certain information by a certain happening or manifestation. Yes, sir. Come on, prophet. These are realities in life. And you see these things. How is it that, you know, um, you can go through a month and then all of a sudden you see a colored butterfly like you've never seen before? Yeah. Why? Hmm. And then there are such ominous signs as itching even of the body. Itching of the hands. Jesus. Itching of the ears. That makes sense. These are omina signs. And one long time omina signs that most of you probably would probably know if you have lived a good long life so far is when you see a shooting star. Yeah. That's an omina sign. Okay. And usually people reference that to be a very, very positive sign. Yes, sir. It's true. That means some people call it a sign of good luck or a great fortune that is about to befall you. Indeed. You see. But before we go into these different types of omens and explaining their meanings, we need to understand from the scriptures what omens are and to see if we are supposed to look into omens as believers. Wow. Are we supposed to move with omens? Or should we just stick with the Holy Spirit? Hey. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells us, that's what we do. <laughs> are you still here? Oh, we're here. And some of you have ear ringing, but you're against omens. <laughs> Your ear is ringing at certain times and you, you are against an omen. omen. And then strange cloudy figures. You come out of your house on a particular day and you look up and you see a strange figure. What does that mean? Today, I want to even give you a certain gift concerning the clouds Amen. today. Amen. Hmm. 
sky colors, the colors of the sky actually are very ominous. Mm. They speak mighty things. When the sky is orange, when you see that light, have you ever seen, sometimes this happened during the December period, where it is like when the sun is setting, it becomes red. Yes. Yeah. Those are ominous signs. Hey. Jesus Christ. Wow. Those are ominous signs. I wish people would hit the like button. Please don't help me not to be breaking my flow. I beg. Yes. This hit is that good. like button if you're watching right now and share with as many people as you can. Tonight is going to be very, very profound. And I, I don't want anybody to miss what I'm going to say tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, do you believe in omens? Yes, sir. Do you believe in omens? If you don't believe, just stick with me a little while. Let's talk about this. Let's go into the scriptures and I'll give you my points and my understanding from the scriptures. Even though there are things I can say from my spiritual knowledge, yes. I don't want to bring my spiritual knowledge ahead today. <laughs> I just want to go in the scriptures and highlight certain things and then I will open you up to a certain realm toward the end. Are you here, somebody? Yes, we are here. Now, you see, most people go through their lives and they never understand why certain problems arise in their lives and how certain problems came about in their lives. Right. But in the wisdom of God, yes, he never wanted good or bad to happen without it being marked by a sign or an omen. Wow. Okay. In God's wisdom, he never wanted anything good or bad to happen without it being marked by a sign hmm. or an omen. If something good is going to happen in your life, there has to be a sign or an omen that precedes that good thing. Yes, sir. If something bad was going to happen in your life, there has to be a sign or an omen that precedes that bad thing. Are you listening to me here? Yes, sir. But because we lack this information, we push signs and omens off to the devil because we do not understand what the scriptures have to say concerning it in the whole counsel of God. Are you still with me here, somebody? Yes, we are here. So many in the body of Christ do not believe in omens, do not believe that as a Christian you should look after omens or you should go into the matter of omens. And many Christians believe that the word of God is against omens right. because the way they read the scriptures, it is just... <laughs> so to me, I feel it's careless. Yeah. People are not taking their, times to, their time to really study what the word of God has to say concerning matters. When they read that, the Bible says, do not go after, you know, um, omen readers or readers of omen. They just put it in their head and run with it without really checking to see why God said that. What was God's point of view? What was he really saying? Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, speaking to me. So when we say that we shouldn't, as God's children, look into omens or go after omens because it is demonic and as a Christian, you're not supposed to go into omens. We are being too quick to demonize certain things yeah. and we miss what the scriptures have to say about them. You see, during the teaching on astrology, what I did was to explain to us in all of the scriptures where you find found that the Bible was saying that we should not go after astrologers and things like that. There, there were also uh, um, the <laughs> the the those who read omens with those scriptures, <laughs> and I explained to you that. You know, it wasn't about God being against going after astrologers. Yeah. And when you look at the particular uh, phrase there, when it de dealt with omens, it wasn't about omens being evil. It was about those who went after omens forgot to consult God concerning the omens they saw. Mm. When they, they saw a certain manifestation or a certain sign, 
and they got whether it was bad or good. Right. They forgot to now go back to God, to now sh- have God be the one that directed the manifestation, oh, or right. to um, or to be um, the. In other words, for God to be the deciding factor whether or not that omen should come into manifestation in their lives. So instead of for them to seek out God's wisdom concerning the omens they saw, they became afraid and began going about things their own way. And they began going into uh, uh, um, witchcraft and diabolism. And they went after those who were of the devil to seek results to or to try to prevent something bad from happening for example there was a time where uh, um, god spoke against israel and israel decided that they were going to go and find a way to stop the prophecy and god was telling them it doesn't matter whatever your omen reader say <laughs> doesn't matter what you have seen in the skies what your omen readers have told you it is what that i have declared will come to pass so there can be a sign, exactly. Are you still here? Over here. There can be a sign in the sky concerning a certain matter. A believer is not supposed to just run off with the sign. They are supposed to go back and pray concerning that sign and say, Lord, this is what I have decoded from this omen. Now I'm coming to you to change it or to cause it to come into manifestation. However, an unschooled person in the spirit will see a sign and then just run with it without going back to God for God to, you know, bring it to pass or to stop the sign from happening if it's, an, if it's a bad omen. Right. Are you still there? We are here. So these were the matters God was trying to prevent because when you went to people who were not after God's heart to not only look into the omens of your life, but then for them to direct you on what to do after that omens has been spoken to you and you being a nation of Israel that is supposed to be following God and his ways and you go after those guys and they give you a false message of the omens, you'll be walking against the plan of God for your nation. Yes, yeah, true. These are the things God was against. And many things I spoke about during the, the, uh, the teaching on astrology yes. concerning omens. Are you still there? We are here. Am I talking to somebody here? So God wasn't against omens in entirely in entirety. He was against how we used omens in reference to his decision making in our lives. Wow. Wow. Not that. Are you still there? Not that, you know, using omens was an error or it was not right to use omens. Mm. It was about finding that information, however, taking the matter to God to determine whether or not that thing would manifest. Yes. So if there is an ominous sign that you see, And that ominous sign is evil. You are supposed to now go to God to determine, for God to help you to determine the manifestation. Wow. Glory. Are you still there? We are here. However, nothing good should happen in your life. And nothing good actually happens in your life without an ominous sign being given for you to anticipate that good thing. Amen. And nothing evil comes to men without an ominous sign being given for you to anticipate the evil. Yes, sir. Everything that happens to man comes by way of a sign or an omen Amen. to Amen. cause you to be prepared for what is good or what is evil. Hmm. Thank you, God. It was God's way to make man or to help man to be prepared for what is about to happen. Yes, this is the reason for omens. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody here? Yes, he's speaking to us, prophet. So now, many other things that I explained there. However, understand 
that the pagans would just follow the omens blindly. Yeah. And they didn't care what God had to say about it. Right, right. They didn't care about what, you know, uh, God's mind concerning the omen was. And they just went about with their own, you know, way. When they saw something good, they just went about it. Yes. However, because we are children of God and we must follow according to God's plan for our lives, when we see an, an evil omen or when we see a positive omen, we are supposed to go back to God to determine its manifestation. Amen. Amen. So, God wasn't against omen. So, let's get that clear. Yes. Now, if signs and omens were bad, God would have never created the sun, the moon, and the stars. Hey, hey. Mm. That's funny. Come on. <laughs> That's true. Because... In typical biblical understanding and knowledge, the sun, the moon, and the stars were created for a sign. Mm, when you read the book of Genesis, the chapter number one, from the verse 12 to the verse 14, the book of Genesis, and then we'll read Micah, Micah chapter 3, verse 6. Let's read it in the King James and then we'll read it in the NET. Genesis chapter 1. From verse 12. From verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass, uh -huh. and herb yielding seed after his kind, mm -hmm. and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself Skip after to the his verse 14. Kind. And God said, let there be light in the firmament. Let there be light in the firmament. Uh -huh. Of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Uh -huh. And let them be for signs. Let them be for signs. Yes, yes, yes. Let them be for signs. All the lights in the universe of God are for signs. Wow. Are for signs. That's true. They are for signs. Let's look at Micah. Micah 3, verse 6. Micah 3, verse 6. Uh -huh. Therefore, night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, and it shall be dark unto you, uh -huh. that ye shall not divine, and the sun shall go down over the prophets. What? <laughs> Read it for me in the NET. I want you to see exactly what it's saying here. Hmm. So this is NLT, right? NET, NET, -E New English Translation. Okay. Verse 6. Mm -hmm. Therefore, night will fall, mm -hmm. and you will receive no visions. Mm -hmm. It will grow dark, and you will no longer be able to read the omens. Uh-huh. The sun will set on these prophets, <laughs> and the daylight will turn to darkness over their heads. Listen. So, for a prophet to be able to see, are you listening to me? Yeah, we're Please here. Please read it again carefully. I want you to see something here. We're here. Read it again one more time. Therefore, night will fall. Night will fall. And you will receive no visions. You will receive no visions. It will go Because, wait a minute. Because there is the portal of visions that opens for certain people at nighttime. Oh, okay. Right, right. And there is also a portal of visions that opens for certain people at daytime. You're preaching. Now you need to understand what time of the day that portals of visions are open to you. Yeah. So based on whether the sun is up or the sun has gone down can determine how effective your sight is in the spirit. Hey. So, if you have not learned and mastered yourself as a prophet to know the the moments where a where portal where a portal of visions is open to you, you will be you will be going blind, as if you are not a prophet. Jesus, because you don't know that season. Yes. Per the rising of the sun or the setting of the sun, Jesus. for visions to be unlocked to you. Oh my God. That is why there's such a thing as night visions. Right. Mm -hmm. And night visions come by way of the sun going down. Hmm. Wow. When the sun has gone down all the way in the hemisphere, then we get night. Yes. Yeah. When the sun rises up to, 
to a certain level in the hemisphere, then we get day. Yes. Am I talking to somebody yes, here? Yes, you are, prophet. So, per the night time or the daytime, that is what is determining somebody's vision. Hmm. Somebody's able to see vision because of the reaction of the sun. That's crazy. Are you still there? Yes, we're here. Now, read it again one more time. Micah 3, verse 6. Uh -huh. Therefore, night will fall. Night will fall. And you will receive no vision. You will receive no visions. It will grow dark. It will grow dark. And you will no longer be able to read the omens. You will no longer be able to read the omens. Wow. Now, this is God actually cursing his prophets. Wow. Wow. Okay. You will no longer be able to read the omens. It's clear. Because there's a certain ability to read omens that has to do with a certain, you know, manifestation of the sun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I talking to somebody yes, here? I wish somebody would hit the like button. Everybody hit the like button. Come on, like people. Like, 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 like. So when you go deeper into astrology and astrological matters, you notice that even the eclipse... The full moon, yeah. the the starry bodies, yep. in their changes and in, and in their reactions, they are giving ominous signs yes. concerning not only our lives but events that are about to take place in the world. Hmm. It's so true. Wow. When there is a certain eclipse, we can be able to make certain deductions based on that eclipse yes. as to what kind of event or cataclysmic event is about to happen within our world. Jesus. Wow. These are omens. Yes. These are omens. So to be against omens, it is like walking, you know, walking into danger blindly. Yes. It is like, you know, uh, uh, um, not knowing the divine seasons of opportunities that are coming your way. Because before anything bad happens to a man or anything good happens to a man, it, pre it is preceded by an omen. Yes, yes. That's how God has set it up in his wisdom. Am I talking to somebody here? Yes, speaking to us. So, and you would notice that even in nature, nature has its own omens. <laughs> nature yeah. has many omens. Yeah. And several times when you're walking by, there are omens being depicted to you. But because you are not spiritually discerning, you miss out on the omens. Uh, hey, wow. help us prophet. Help us. Wow, 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 wow. You miss out on the omens. Am I speaking to you here? Yes, you are, prophet. You see, when you see a dark cloud and it's daytime and a dark cloud shows up over your house, it is telling you something. Hey, hey. God forbid. It is an ominous sign. Things don't just happen to people and they are caught into certain calamities. No. An ominous sign is given to you so that you can be prepared yes. for what is about to happen. For what is about to take place. Am I speaking to you here? Yes, you are, prophet. So, there's a reason why many people become um, a victim of un un unexplainable misfortunes hmm. in their lives. How somebody just got into an accident. Right. And they were just, two minutes ago, you saw them. Right. Two minutes ago, they were jovial. They were, And that was it. It is because people are not paying attention to omina signs. Right, right. I've spoken to you severally concerning even your left foot. When you dash your, head, your left foot, it is an omina sign. <laughs> when you hit your right foot, it's an omina sign. Every, <laughs> every time God is trying to cause us to be prepared for what is about to happen. But religion has stolen the gift of God. That God has brought to us by his providential care system. Wow. Religion. Wow. You're still here. Over here. Am I talking to you here, yes, somebody? You are. Now, the word of God speaks concerning lying omens. Hmm. 
Lying omens, the book of Ezekiel, the chapter number 22, the verse 28. I want to show you something here. I'm taking you somewhere tonight. Amen. Amen. Ezekiel 22, mm -hmm. verse 28. Uh -huh. And this is going to be King James. Read the King James and then the NET. Okay. And her prophets have daubed them with untempered mortar, mm -hmm. seeing vanity and divining lies unto them, uh -huh. saying, Thus saith the Lord, when the Lord hath not spoken. Okay, let's read it in the NET. Her priests abused my law uh -huh. and have desecrated my holy things. They have desecrated my holy things. Uh -huh. They do not distinguish between the holy and the profane. They are not able to distinguish between the holy and the profane. This, go, this was God's problem with his people. Yeah. They didn't know how to distinguish between the holy and the profane. Yeah. They were mixing everything together. That was God's problem with his people. Yeah. They are mixture. God was not against the spiritual arts of omens because he created these signs yes. in the universe yes, yes. so that man can be prepared for the good that is ahead of him and for the evil that is ahead of him. Jesus Christ. But because his people were not able to distinguish the, the holy from the profane and mixed what was God and what was the devil together, this was the problem God had with them. Yes, sir. Keep reading. Her officials, well, no, this is going to be, or recognize any distinction between the unclean and the clean. Uh -huh. They ignore my Sabbaths, mm -hmm. and I am profaned in their midst. Are you still there? We're here. We're here. Read, read the, verse, the verse 28 again for me. The verse... Um, Okay, so this is going to be t verse 28. Yes. Her prophets coat their messages with whitewash. What, watch this. The prophets, they are coating their messages. They are not giving the message. Yeah. They are coating their messages. Okay. Making the messages, you know, sometimes when the Lord speaks to you even by way of prophecy, yeah. sometimes as preachers, because of the person we are talking to, we can quote it. This is the problem. Yeah. We can quote the message and make it not seem as effective as it's supposed to be because of maybe the person we have, the relationship we have with the person. Mm. That's quoting. Yeah, yeah. Next thing. They see false mm -hmm. visions. And announce lying omens for them. They see false visions and they announce lying omens. Lying omens. Wow. So if the word of God is speaking concerning lying omens, that also means that there are truthful omens. Yes, sir. Are you still there? We're here. Omens are real. Mm. So if a believer is saying, I don't believe in omens, I don't believe in omens, believe it or you don't believe it, it happens. <laughs> Because if there's what is referred to as lying omens, then there must be truthful omens. Yes, sir. And as we go on today, you're going to find that how omens play a big role, even in matters of Jesus' own life. Wow. wow. In matters of our life and our existence. Yes. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, all of us. So... This is what these prophets were doing. Yes. They were bringing about lying omens. God was against lying omens. Yes. Omens and messages that will be quoted. He was against that. So he stopped his people from going to those people who will bring about lying omens and will also speak his message quoted. Wow. wow. That's deep. Huh. So... Understand, just as he speaks of false visions, that also implies that there are true visions. Yes, sir. Because there are people who see true visions. So God's problem is not against visions. He's not against visions. So neither is he against omens. Mm. It is about whether the omen is operating under a certain falsehood. Yes, yes. Or the omen is operating under... A disguise 
to quote a message so that people don't get the right information they are supposed to get. Oh, wow. Are you still with me, somebody? Yes, we're here. So, in other words, it was the wickedness of men's heart mm. is what destroyed the beauty of the providences of God that God has given men to prepare them for whatever is about to happen. Yeah. So, it is not about the omen. It's about who? is interpreting the omen. Yes, yes. Because if they have a wicked heart, they will quote their message. Hmm. If they have an unrighteous heart, they will give about lying omens. Wow. wow. They will bring about lies instead of speaking the truth about the omen. That's so true. So it was not about the omen. It was about who was speaking the omen. Yes. And that's always the problem. The problem is not uh, uh, astrology. It's not, a, it's not all these things that, you know, you find me speaking about. It is about who is handling it and what spirit are they using. That has always been God's problem, God's issue. Deep. Are you still with me here? Yes, we're here. So God wanted you to know before evil happens, before good happens to you, God wanted you to know ahead of time. Yes. So he created such a providence as omens. That's deep. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't you like to know before somebody is going to uh, uh, um, walk into your life and bring trouble to you <laughs> to be signaled? Yep. Wouldn't you like to know? I would love that. You see, many, <laughs> many <laughs> misfortunes have taken place in your life because you didn't pay attention to omens. Yes, sir. Because there are ominous signs that alert you that a person you're about to meet is going to be bad for you. Jesus Christ. And if you don't learn to read these omens, you'll be walking yourself into danger all the time. Yes, sir. You'll be walking yourself into misfortunes and unfortunate relationships all the time. Yeah. Whereas God has created a providence by which you can be garrisoned against such. Amen. Amen. Are you still here? We're, here? We're here. So, we understand now that when a sign is favorable to men, it is a good omen. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when the sign is not favorable to men, it is a bad omen. Yes. When the sign that you are seeing is favorable, then we call it a good omen. Mm. When the sign is not favorable, we call it a bad omen. Dreams are typical forms of omens. Wow. wow. If you are against omens, you should be against dreaming. Yes. <laughs> wow. Are you still yes, here? We're here? We're here. If you are against omen. You should also be bold enough to say, I'm against the concept of dreaming. Hmm. <laughs> that makes sense. Because a dream is a typical form of an omen. 100%. If you're against omens and you wake up from a dream worried or happy because of what you saw, <laughs> because of what you saw in the dream, if you are against omens and you got up from a dream and you were excited or you got up from a dream and you were worried, <laughs> it is because you believe in omens. Uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> because you took what you saw in the dream as a bad sign. Right. That's why you were worried. <laughs> Or you took what you saw in the dream as a good sign. That's why you became excited about the dream. Right. So anytime you dream about something and you get up, you're excited or worried, it is because you believe dreams are omens. They speak of something. Mm, this is so good. People, are you here? Oh, we're here. They speak of something. That is why you are excited after you wake up. That is why you are worried after you wake up from the dream. 
Because you know that what you saw in your dream will bring about something. Yes. So it made you happy or it made you sad. This is good. Yeah, good. You can't be against women if you believe in dreaming. You can't. There's no way. <laughs> so let us stop, you know, pushing demonism and start acknowledging the wisdom of God in creation. In what God has made as his providential care for man. Instead of pushing demonism ahead, we should push the wisdom of God. Amen. This is God's wisdom. I agree. This is what God has done. Right, right, right. To prevent man from falling into mischief or to alert man for what he is about to do for him. Yeah. You see, there are moments in your life when you are so discouraged and depressed and bitter about life. And many times God is bringing an omen to you to give you in, to give you courage for the future exactly. and to encourage you. But because you, are, you have not opened your heart up for this realm of understanding, you walk on in depression. Hmm. You walk on in frustration. You walk on in timidity because you are not looking after the omens yes, that have been shown to you. Glory. You cannot see what God is about to do. Glory. You cannot anticipate what God is up to in your yes, life. Yes. Wow. Are you still here? We're here. We're here. So there are good omens and there are bad omens. Yes. And your dreams are communicating this to you every day. <laughs> wow. Every time you go to sleep, you receive ominous dreams. That tells you what is about to happen in your life. What you should anticipate. So you can be prepared for it. Amen. Now when you read the book of Isaiah, the chapter number 3, verse 2. Read in the NET. The word of God speaks concerning the offices of the, of the Old Testament. And interestingly, interestingly, omen readers were a part of them. I didn't know that. I remember dealing with this, you know, when I was teaching on, mis on, on fortune telling. I want you to read it for us. Amen. So this is Isaiah chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 2. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 2. The mighty men and warriors. Uh -huh. Read from the verse 1 into the verse 2. Okay, verse 1. Look, the sovereign Lord who commands armies is about to remove from Jerusalem mm -hmm. and Judah every source of security, including... All the food and this water. was their source of security. I want you to watch it. Yeah. Uh huh. All the food and water. All the food and water. The mighty men and warriors. The mighty men and warriors. Judges and prophets. Judges and prophets. Omen readers and leaders. Omen readers are part of the security. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Of a nation. Wow. That's good. Omen readers. And God was punishing this. These people at this time right. by removing this security from them. Right. That makes sense. Are you still there? Yes, we're here. And I put it to you. If you are against omens and ominous signs, you are making God a fool. And you're also making Jesus a fool. <laughs> yeah. Why do I say that? Because <laughs> when you read the Bible in the book of Isaiah, the chapter number 7, the verse 14, Jesus' birth was a sign. Right. That is true. Are you still there? Over here. Jesus' birth was a sign. <laughs> Jesus, his birth was a sign. Yes. Yes, yes. Jesus' birth was a sign. Amen. Can you read? Yes, Isaiah sir. 7 verse 14. 7 verse 14. Mm -hmm. For this reason. For this reason. The sovereign master himself. The sovereign master himself. Will give you a confirming sign. A confirming sign. A virgin. Yes. <laughs> Keep reading. Look, this young woman 
is about to conceive mm-hmm. and will give birth to a son. A virgin shall give birth to a son. Read it for me in the King James Version. King James, verse 14. Let me see. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Uh Behold, a virgin shall conceive Uh and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. You see, this was the sign to Israel that a virgin will give birth. That was an ominous sign because that's something of a supernatural manifestation. Exactly. How can a virgin give birth to a yes. child? Yes. You see, there are many children who are born into this world as an ominous sign. Mm-hmm. The Bible speaks of proper children. There are children that come by way of the will of men. Yes. And there are children that come by way of the will of God. There are children that come by way of, you know, the cries of men. Hmm. You see, many people think that for a woman to, to, to be pregnant, it only has to be because, you know, men and women came together in sexual intercourse and then they produced a baby. No, okay. that's not the only time. <laughs> <laughs> There are many manifestations of people being born without any sperm coming together. Jesus Christ. These children are known as proper children. (laughs) Wow. They are coming as a sign. Yes. They are coming as a sign for a particular season. Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. That's how Jesus came. Yeah. He came as a sign for a particular season. Yes. So when you speak of things, you must have a spiritual understanding of how children are born into this world. Yeah. And strangely, strangely, we've seen situations where a woman is physically, naturally barren right. and cannot give birth and goes to seek a child from the waters. And all of a sudden, she becomes pregnant. Yes. By what means? Mm -hmm. Wow, 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 wow. These are issues of birth that it's not today we're going to go into that issue. But I want you to understand that omens are all around us. Jesus' birth was an omen to Israel. Mm. This was a good sign to Israel that the nation of Israel is about to receive the promise that God made to Abraham. He says, the blessing of Abraham was to Abraham and his seed, not as in Isaac, but Jesus. But they didn't recognize what that virgin birth meant for their nation. Yes. Are you still there? We are here. So, These signs and omens are a language. Are a language. Yes. Now, when you look at the word of God, even Jesus spoke of his own second appearing, that it will manifest by way of signs in the heavens, signs in the sun. When you read the book of Luke, the chapter number 21, from the verse 25, there will be signs in the heavens, signs in the skies, omina signs, that will depict many things about the events concerning the coming of the Lord. Mm. Luke 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. This is King James. And there shall be signs in the sun Uh and in the moon. Signs in the sun and in the moon. Listen, there have been many signs in the sun and in the moon thus far. Mm. And they have spoken concerning the age we have have entered in. But because we are not as the church, skillful on the matters of reading omens, we don't even know what these seasons hold for us. God have mercy. As the church. But this is what the Isakarians were doing in the Old Testament. Wow. This is what they were doing. Many things, many signs. Sometimes when I go outside and I look at the moon, I can tell the seasons even of my life, I'm about to enter. The season of ministry, I'm about to enter. Because when you go outside, when the moon is up, and you look at the moon, 
there are certain things you will notice within the moon that will give you a certain information about yourself. Wow. 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 So life is a mystery. These are omens. The moon would literally communicate with you. Because all the souls in this world, are you still here? Oh, we're here. <laughs> all the souls that came into this world came by way of the moon. That's it. The being that brings souls in this world comes at the time where the moon shows up. Hey. Wow. We'll talk about that later. What? It is that being that uses the moon to travel to 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 bring souls into the world. Okay. I don't want to go into that matter tonight. There is nobody who came into this world without the transport system of the moon. Amazing. It is known as the mystics of the moon. That's why the moon controls the woman's cycle right. of birthing. Exactly. It's called menstrual cycle. Exactly. And the actual rendering is moon cycle. Wow. Menstrual refers to moon. Wow. It's too good. You are against omens. But the moon, <laughs> when it comes up, it is telling you souls are coming into the world. Hey, that's crazy. And it will bring souls into the world. That full moon, when it comes, before it gets to the full moon, by the time it's beginning to show up, by the time it gets to seven days, where it becomes a full moon, because the reason it's called a full moon is because the moon starts from somewhere before right. it becomes a full moon. Are you still here? Over here? So by the time it becomes a full moon, it has now completed the cycle of bringing souls into the world. Hmm. So when the moon is going back, it is also taking souls out of the world. Hey. Wow. Wow. I'll speak on this later. It is because we don't understand spiritual happenings. So we speak against things we do not understand. Your soul was brought into this world by the moon. There's a number of, <laughs> there's a number of souls that come into this world every month. There's a number, a particular number. And it's that being that travels by way of the moon. The being that is responsible for bringing souls into this world. I will not say the name of that being today. Wow. Because if I say the name, some of you would think <laughs> something else. <laughs> it is that being that uses the moon to transport souls into the world. And when the moon is going back, it is that being that takes souls into this world. People don't just die. It is the moon that takes them out. This is how come our fathers knew when they were about to die. Oh, wow. wow. Our fathers of old, they knew when their time was about to end. They were looking at the moon, looking at the stars, and depicting from the stars the omens concerning their lifespan. Wow. wow. And so when they were about to die, they knew how to decode by the omens of the sun, by the omens of the moon. By the omens of the stars, and they will prepare their house and bless their children. That's how they knew. But we have pushed these things off. When you, as a man of God, you just die casually and you didn't, you didn't prepare anything. You didn't prepare anyone for legacies because you are not watching the omens of your life. Hmm. A man of God should never leave this world. Without knowing. Wow. Never should a man of God leave this world without knowing. 
And sometimes when men of God are about to leave, you start hearing them say speaking in a certain way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like miles, bro. They will start speaking speak in a certain way. That's how you would know. You're still there? Oh, I'm here. still coming. I haven't I haven't gotten anywhere yet. <laughs> so if you don't master reading signs and omens, a whole city can be attacked. <laughs> I'm telling you, a whole city can be attacked and you will become a victim of that attack. But before a city comes under any kind of attack or siege, there was an omen. I tell you right now, what happened in Maui? <laughs> there was an omen. There is nothing evil that happens in this world before an omen, without an omen showing up. No natural disasters, earthquake, all the, name them. None of it happens without an omen showing up. None. Typically in certain places, you will notice that before a certain calamity is about to strike in those places, you will even see the movement of certain animals will be very, very different. Yep. Yeah. You will notice all of a sudden, certain, you know, uh, uh, um, a flock of birds will just swamp the whole area. Mm-hmm. San Omen. It's an omen. You will see animal reactions in a certain time and season. They are giving you ominous signs, but you can't catch it. Because we are too far removed from spirituality. We are just doing religion and playing church. We are playing church. I'm telling you, what happened in Maui, there was omina signs. Mm. Even if the guys at the top did not alert you or did not say anything, if people had gotten a certain spiritual knowledge, they would have decoded by the omina signs what was about to happen. Mm. No fire outbreak, whether it was man-made or natural meat, everything that is about to happen, if you're going to be involved in an accident, an ominous sign will show up. <laughs> yep. If somebody was plotting to kill you, an ominous sign will show up. Because nothing bad should happen to you without you knowing. You're still here. Am I talking to you here? Oh, yes. Nature would warn you even. Nature will warn you. Nature. <laughs> wow. I said nature will warn you. Mm. In your own physical body, you feel... Have you ever... You know, you're trying to go somewhere and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you feel like you need to go use the restroom. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about using using the restroom. All of a sudden. <laughs> Omina signs are everywhere, but we don't understand it. Yeah. We don't. <sighs> I'm trying to help God's people. In this season and in this lifetime, the Bible says in the last days, perilous times shall come. Yeah. There's about to be perils in this world like you've never seen. Jesus. That is why I'm such in a hurry to equip God's people concerning these things. Glory. Thank you, prophet. The Bible says, even the coming of the Lord should not take the children of light unawares. Yes. It says, because you are not in the darkness, you are in the light. Yes. Yes. You are not in the darkness, you are in the light. When they were asking Jesus concerning the sign of his coming, Jesus played it back to them. 
Matthew chapter 16. He says, you know, you are asking me for a sign of my coming, but you should already know. Because according to your own knowledge, when the sky is red and lowering, you say it's going to be fair weather. How is it that you're not able to detect the sign of the Son of Man? Right. So right. Jesus has his own omina sign yeah. as to how he will show up and when he will show up. Yeah. There is a sign that will precede the coming of Jesus. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that nobody would say, I didn't know. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah. And as a child of God, you should know. The Bible says that the day, <laughs> that no man knoweth the day nor the hour. Yeah. And I would like to say, <laughs> oh Lord, I would like to say, when you read your Bible, be careful. <laughs> it says, no man knoweth the day nor the hour. Ne- and Jesus even said, neither even the son of man. Right. But you see, when we read the word of God, we are not akin to the timings of when things are being said. How could Jesus not know the time of his own coming? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'll leave that for another day's discussion. We can't wait. Are you still here? We are here. Am I talking to you here? Yes, you are, yeah. prophet. The Bible says, if we are in the light, he says that day should not take us on our ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should not take us on our ways. We should be able to pinpoint the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the day, the hour, the minute, the second. I need that. Hello. Oh, we're here. This is for spiritual men, spiritual people, people who want to be spiritual. If you want to remain in religion, you can remain in religion. Right. But if you want to grow in the spirit, you will understand when God is about to do something, you will know it. Glory, glory. Are you still here? We are here. For God will do nothing yes. except he reveals it to his servants, the prophets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can be the prophet of your life. Oh, yes, I receive. He's not just speaking about, you know, prophets in, in their offices and things like that. No, exactly. you are the first prophet of your life. Yes. God will do nothing. You are the prophet of your neighborhood. God will do nothing. If there's about to be uh, uh, destruction that is about to happen in your neighborhood, you should know first. Mm. By Omina signs. Am I talking to you here? Yes, you are. Don't say, you know, why can't God just speak to me directly? (laughs) I want to ask you a question. Elijah, why didn't he hear God directly? To know when rain would come. Because we see the mighty prophet Elijah. He had declared that there would be no rain for the space of three and a half years. And there was no rain. Now when he was about to pray, to bring rain back, he went to pray. And the Bible says he went to pray seven times. And did not know by the voice of God. Where that rain was going to come. Hmm. Can I share with you something here? Yes, you can. Elijah prayed. Every time he went back to pray, he will ask his servant, after he had prayed, to go and check for an ominous sign. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Every time. I'm about to share something with you right now that will really help you in prayer. Every time Elijah would pray concerning the rain coming back, God did not tell him, I am going to bring rain today. Uh -uh." He wanted to bring the rain. He went to pray. Mm. The first time he goes to pray, he sends his servant, go and check. What do you see? Right. Why is he doing that? Why is Elijah, after praying, sending his servant to go and check for a sign? an omina sign that will alert him that rain or that God has answered his prayer. 
Why did Elijah do that? Right. You think Elijah did not know the voice of God? You think that Elijah could not hear the voice of God? It was because it is by an omina sign that you are assured that God has heard you in prayer. This is how they knew when they prayed in the Old Testament, they would have to go and confirm it by a sign, by an omina sign in the Old Testament. If they made a prayer about something, they will look for an omina sign to depict that the prayer has been answered or the prayer has not been answered. Are you still here? We're here. Today when we go and pray, <laughs> we say, wait for a note of victory. Or when you feel peace about it, <laughs> that means God has heard you. Somebody hit the like button. Hit the like button and share. So say, when I, I felt peace about it, that's how I knew that God had heard me. Do you know that that peace and that note of victory can come as a result of your own personal bias because of what you want? If you're praying for something, you can feel like God has answered you because of your bias. <laughs> you want God to do something. So you feel like God has heard you. And you took that as a note of victory. Or you felt peace about it because you have a personal bias. So what... God has introduced into the mechanics of prayer is omens. Mm. Where when you are praying, you can be able to tell if your prayer reached heaven or it didn't reach heaven. Right. Wow. Am I talking to you here? Yes, you are. So if you don't believe in omens, you may be wasting your time in prayer. Wow. Wasting serious time in prayer. In those days, they will look for omens. After they have prayed, they will go and look for an omen. Right. To know if God heard what they said. If God had answered the prayer. These are the secrets of prophets. That's deep. <laughs> prophets and spiritual men. How they are able to tell certain events about to happen is by omens. Yes. It is not always what they saw in a vision or what, you know, they were, you know, revealed to by a dream. What was revealed to them by a dream? It is not always that. Wow. And like I said, dreams are also typically omens. Mm. But there are signs that you can see as a prophet, that will indicate an event that is about to take place. And you will prophesy, thus say the Lord, based on that ominous sign. Mm. Am I speaking to you here? Oh, you are. So, Elijah, what did he do? He's praying for rain to come. Yeah. Then he sends his servant, go and check. Seven times, at the seventh time, the servant came back with a report and said, Master, I see in the clouds, <laughs> I see a cloud like a man's hand. Oh, wow. 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 Elijah didn't say, Oh, did you see? Did you hear rain falling? Did you hear thunder? No. Right. Elijah said, "Run and tell Ahab, rain is coming." Amen. Amen. Wow. Amen. Are you still there, somebody? Yes, we are here. Run and tell Ahab, rain is coming. He said, "I see a cloud like a man's hand." Yes. Listen to me. One of the ways to know that your prayer has been heard. When you are praying about something, 
Don't just get a note of victory in your heart. Mm. Don't just feel peace about it. Yeah. In your Bible, there's a record concerning looking into the clouds. Mm. Wow. When you are praying about something and it's an important matter and you need to know God's mind to know that this thing has been granted you, to know that God has given you permission to move forward with a certain thing. When you are making such prayers, you should know how to interpret the clouds. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. wow. Because a typical manifestation of answered prayers is shown in the clouds. Okay. Wow. And anytime after you are prayed and you got a note of victory, please confirm it by going outside and looking at the clouds. Uh. Now, how will you know that the cloud is giving you an ominous sign? How will you know? Please hit the like button. I'm giving you a big gift here tonight. Yes, yes. How will you know? How will you be able to tell? Wow. These are the skillful acts of prophets. How they were able to tell. God said to Abraham, look at the stars. See if you are able to tell. Yes. Uh. When you have prayed about something, go outside. Look at the clouds. Look at the clouds. When you see a cloud that is in the shape of anything that looks like an image you recognize, it is an omen. Wow. Wow. Ordinarily, clouds are just a ball figure or a certain, you know, a confine or gatherings. They just gather. Yep. But anytime you prayed about something and you go outside and check the clouds and the clouds represents or looks like an image of anything you recognize, <laughs> it is an omen. Amen. So the servant said to Elijah, I see a cloud like a man's hand. He didn't say, I saw a man's hand. I saw a cloud that is like a man's hand. The hand of a man. Because typically, when we pray, we look into the heavens. Why did people pray and look into the heavens? They were looking after a sign. When people prayed and they lifted their eyes to look into the heavens, they were looking for a sign. Wow. It was not just, oh, let me pray because God is in heaven. No. <laughs> <laughs> they were looking, expecting for an omina sign. Right. These are spiritual things that many people do not know and do not understand. And there are many things to show you concerning prayer yes, when it sir. deals, that deals with omens. You still here? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> but if you don't know that there is such a thing as an omen, you will go into prayer and keep praying. Keep praying about the same thing. Whereas God may have brought an ominous sign to you. You see, the reason we pray for the same thing over and over again, it is because we have not received the omens for the answer. When you have not received the omens for the answer, you will keep praying about the matter. Yeah. Continuously, continuously, continuously. And you wear yourself out concerning the matter. That's how come people can be praying about something for five years, ten years. But because they don't know how to look at the omens of the answers to prayer, They toil in prayer for no reason. Yeah. 
when I pray about something, I know God has heard me. Especially when I know I'm, what I'm asking is according to his will. And so if I go and pray about something and I get a note of victory, whatever that feeling is, or I feel peace within me, my next step, especially as a spiritual person, is to go and check the clouds. There are other things to check, but we're not dealing with that today. But <laughs> you go and check the clouds, and the clouds will depict whether or not your prayer has been received in the heavens. This is what the prophets of all knew. Are you still here, somebody? We're here. Am I talking to you here? Yes, you're talking yes, to us. And typically in the Old Testament, usually they would offer sacrifices. The priests, they would offer sacrifices. Even before the priesthood, there were offerings of sacrifices. Yeah. And what will ensure that your, your sacrifice was accepted, it was by an omen. There will be an omina sign that will prove to you that your sacrifice was, accept, was accepted by God. Right. How did Cain and Abel know that this sacrifice was accepted and this one was rejected? Mm. When they brought their sacrifice to God and they brought their gifts to God, there was an omina sign that showed that Abel was accepted and Cain's was, was rejected. Every time a sacrifice is made, even among the priesthood, there is something that happens. How come we see Elijah when he's praying concerning the altar he has set up? He calls fire from heaven. And fire coming from heaven was a sign that his God was real because it was a sign that his God could hear his prayer. Oh, come on, people. Are you still here? The fire that came from heaven was a sign that the God he was serving could hear him. But the other people who were praying and cutting themselves got no omens. There was no sign. And they ended up killing themselves. Because they didn't receive any sign that their God had heard them. When you are praying about something, God will give you a sign that he's heard you. He will. He will. That is his, his wisdom in the universe to show his people that what you have said. You see, we, are, you see, we have many Christians who they have a relationship with God that is not connecting. It's, not, they have, it's, like, it's like I know you, but I don't know you. It's like I know about you, but I don't really know you. Are you still here? We're here. When, when I have a relationship with somebody, I can tell when they have heard what I'm saying. And I can tell when they didn't hear me. Because there are signs that they, that they will give that will ensure for me to know that they have heard what I'm saying. That means I have a certain relationship with them and a certain bond with them that I can be able to tell. That is what God has created in the universe. Mm. Omens. So you know when God is talking to you and when God is not talking to you. Indeed. You know when it's an evil manifestation that is after you when it's, or when it's God that is coming to bring something to you. You are able to tell. Omens. And the priest, many times when they will do their sacrifices, God will give them an omino sign to say, this sacrifice has been accepted, this one has been rejected. No wonder the Bible tells us that we present our body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, what will be the sign? It's not just to say, oh, my sacrifice was acceptable. My sac <laughs> you know, how do you know that even the offerings you brought to church were accepted by God? Because we can see in the word of God that people's offerings were rejected. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's why some of you give and give and give, you're not seeing any, any, any fruits. Because you don't know when God has not accepted your offering. Right. Mm. That's good. 
So these things must be taught in the church. How to know when my offering has been accepted by God, when my seed has been accepted by God, right. so I know I can expect a harvest. Because there are people who are just giving willy-nilly, not understanding whether or not their giving has been accepted. Because God can reject your giving. Right. You're still there. Oh, yeah. yeah. You cannot afford to walk in your, in your life without knowing how to read omens. You can't wow. afford it. Wow, wow. You know, something interesting happened with Abraham's servant. Abraham sent his servant. Are you still there? Oh, we're here. Abraham sent his servant to find a wife <laughs> All right. for Isaac. Yeah, yeah. The servant got to a certain point, decided to pray about the matter. And his prayer was basically for God to give him an omina sign as to which one was going to be the wife of Isaac. He prayed to God and asked God, please grant me good speed so that when I get there, I will know who is the exact woman that should be Isaac's wife. Because all his master said, go to uh, my people there and look for a wife for my son Isaac. Mm -hmm. And he had to pick the right one. Yeah. yeah. So when he got there, he prayed. Can we read it? Genesis 24. This is Genesis 24. Read from the verse 12. Genesis 24, the verse 12. This is a guy. <laughs> He's so conscious that he doesn't want to make a mistake. Yeah. So he uses yeah. all means. He doesn't want to falter because the nation of Israel is about to be birthed. Right. right. Hey, are you still here? Oh, we're here. Yeah. Because Rebecca was the one who brought forth Jacob. Right. Mm -hmm. The nation of Israel is about to be birthed. So we cannot play with who the mother of Israel will be. Right. <laughs> are you still there? Oh, we're here. We can't joke with that. That's serious business. <laughs> In the heavenlies. Indeed, yeah. Serious matter in the heavenlies. And they are, he's so peculiar about it. He says, please God, give me good speed. When I go there, the one I meet in the well, that will help me fetch water. Amen. Oh, mm. That will be the one. See, your path is always being directed by omens, but you are not spiritual to understand. Wow. Thank you, prophet. Can you read it for me? Yes, sir. Yeah. And he said, Oh, Lord God of oh, my master Abraham. Oh, Lord God of my master Abraham. So he's talking to the, <laughs> to the God of heaven. <laughs> and you are against omens. God is about to give an omen. <laughs> yeah. Keep reading. I pray thee. Uh-huh. Send me good speed this day. Send me good speed this day. Uh-huh. And show kindness unto my master Abraham. And show kindness unto my master Abraham. Uh-huh. How? Behold, I stand here by the well of water. Uh huh. And the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. The daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Uh huh. And let it come to pass. Let it come to pass. That the damsel. The damsel. To whom I shall say. To whom I shall say. Let down thy pitcher. Let down thy pitcher. I pray thee that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink. And I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Are you still there? We're here. Wow. He was asking for an omen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone that will help me to give me water and to also fetch water for my camel. I, please finish the reading. <laughs> It was serious matter yeah. in the heavens. <laughs> hmm. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher. Uh -huh. I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Uh -huh. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. Now watch this. Watch this. All he was asking is that the sign should be this. And the <laughs> Keep and finishing. Finish reading. Okay. And thereby 
shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master? This is how I will know you have shown kindness unto my master. He says, this is how I will know it. First, the one I would say to, please allow me to drink water from your pitcher. He says, <laughs> this was the sign. The sign was not just about him right. drinking. This was the sign. If I would say to this one, allow me to drink water from your pitcher, and she will not only grant me the water, but she will also say to me, I want to also give your animals. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Because anybody can agree. If they are coming to, <laughs> to you, anybody can agree. Any damsel can agree for you to drink water from them. That would not be a problem. But to also give you, but to give you water and then propose yes. by their own accord without you telling them. That was the omen he was looking for. And Rebecca did exactly as should be done. And we are against omens. Not anymore. <laughs> Not anymore. The whole nation of Israel was constituted by an omen. You can't be against omen. Because even Jesus <laughs> speaks of an omen as to who is going to betray him. The one that would dip his hand at the same time in the bowl. This will be the one that will betray me. Omen. Bad omen. Bad omen. <laughs> the moment Judas did, he said, ah, they have caught me. I see. So, if Jesus is using an omen to, to show who was going to betray him, who are you? As a man of God, these are the things that you should become skillful in mm. so that you can help God's children not walk blindly into danger. Are you still there? We're here. Yeah. There are mighty omens Ominous signs in this universe, in this universe, mighty ominous signs. For example, I'll just give you one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Two. Thank you. How many of you have ever walked around and you notice that everywhere you go, you are seeing keys on the ground. Wow. You're seeing keys on the ground. It's like during that week or that season, you're always noticing somebody's key or somebody's key on the ground as you're walking about. Wow. wow. It's an omen. Right. If you notice during the week, you came up about the shell of a snake. It's an omen. Wow. <laughs> if you picked up your phone and it drops from your hand, it's an omen. Oh, I get that one a lot. Are you still here? We're here. We're here. Well, people want to know what it means. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Are you still here? We're here. If you had a... If you had a clock that was on the wall and all of a sudden it fell 
from where it was. It's an omen. Uh, yeah, sound bad. Sound terrible. Even your frame, your picture frame, that has been on the wall for probably two years, three years, all of a sudden it falls. There is no earthquake, there's nothing. It is an omen. You're still there. Oh, we're here. This is an omen. So, prophet. Yes. A scorpion just slipped through, slipped through the cracks. <laughs> And I'm and I'm a and I'm a Scorpio and I'm a Scorpio. So what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! <laughs> hey. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Word. People of God. Man of God. Yeah. We are missing many things around our lives. Yeah. So many things. So many things that are happening around our lives. So many things. You see, signs are omens, and omens are a language in which the spiritual world seeks to communicate with the physical world. Yeah. To alert us of what is going to happen, what is about to happen, when it will happen, how it will happen. Mm. It is a language that the spiritual world uses to communicate what is about to happen how it will happen, when it will happen. These are spiritual world communication. Yes, sir. So a being will normally not just appear to you to tell you about anything. But if something from your table falls, nothing was pushing it, nobody was there, the spirit realm is trying to communicate with you. Right. Mm. Wow. Teacher. I'm here. Yes, sir. I'm here. Is all of a sudden the door that has always been so steady decides to just come off. The spirit world is trying to talk to you. Yes. Wow. And you must be skillful in matters of reading omens. You must become skillful. Mm -hmm. Breaking an egg by accident. Same thing. Omens. It's wow. an omen. Mm -hmm. It was not by accident. You thought it's accident. It's an accident. Wow. When you're walking... Listen to me. When you're walking in the street and somebody just bumps into you, you're walking. Somebody bumps into you. It's an omen. And the moment you turn to like find out like why, like why, <laughs> you know, you have created something in the spirit. There are certain moments that when something happens, you should ignore it and just keep moving. When you dash your foot against the stone, it has a message. Mm -hmm. Any foot, whether it's left or right, it has a message. God did not leave us 
without a care system. God did not leave us without a care system. So I want you to be awakened. That's why I'm teaching you these things. Yes. Amen. If Amen. other men of God decides not to talk to you about this thing and they make it demonic and, oh, don't go into omens and things like that. This, you're just providing a way for the enemy to destroy people's life without them knowing how to prepare for it. Right. And it's terrible. There are things I want to share, but I can't share. I'm being no, restricted. No, you can't, Prophet. Yeah. <laughs> We're here. We're, it's only only, four. We're only here. in private I will share these things, <laughs> <laughs> some of these things. You know, sometimes when I'm trying to open my mouth, I'm, I'm literally feeling my mouth being closed. Oh, wow. Okay, never mind. That reminds me. Um, my father, Pastor Obed, is coming this week. Amen. We can't and wait. And it's going to be amazing. Please go and register. And by the way, um, we are not going to be going live on the all night. Uh, we'll only be going live on our private uh, Supernatural Church group. Yeah. And because some of the things that um, my father is going to be sharing will be on a certain degree. Okay. So we're not going to be going live. <laughs> yeah. Uh, even on Sunday. On Sunday, we'll, this Sunday, we will not broadcast live on YouTube. Oh, wow. Mm. wow. So we would have to do it on our private. Um, we've we'll been, we'll, we'll been meaning to do things like this anyways, um, but it's just going to be on the private uh, group. Um, so if you are not on that private group and you are a Supernatural ch Church um, online member, please make sure you seek to be added to the group um, so that you can be a part of service on Sunday. Amen. Because service will, will not be going live on Sunday on YouTube. So that's public service announcement. Because some of the things that uh, my father is about to share is going to break break the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. <Amen>. <laughs> so, Hallelujah. <laughs> so if you have not registered for the conferences, ah, the stuff, my father, hey, Jesus Christ. Yes. Register. If you are a man, if you are a woman, register for the women's conference on Wednesday. Please be in this building. Mm. I keep telling you, people think I'm joking. Be in this building. If you are registering to be online, yeah, register to be in this building. The men's register to be in this building. Register to be in this building. And anyone who wants to be here present and you cannot afford it, I will sponsor five people. For women's conference and men's conference. Amen. I'm only sponsoring five people. Five women who are going to be here present. And five um, who are going to be on the men's conference. Five women and five men. That's it. But you'll have to send an information to the Supernatural Church group that you would like to be sponsored for that. That's if you cannot afford it. Um but the online people, I think your price is very affordable. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't suppose so. <laughs> um, but if you're going to be in this house, I want you to be, um, to send a message. Please send a message to today, today, today. Let today not run out. Send a message today. Um, but every every session for this week is going to be on private groups, private mess, private uh, platforms. It's not going to be broadcasted live. So just be aware of that. Amen. Amen. Well, you can simply send a message um, to the Telegram group. The Telegram group. Uh, please post the Telegram group, the church Telegram group, please. The, the Telegram group will be posted on the chat right now. And please, this is for online members only. Online members only. Online members only. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 I pray to God that our eyes will be open as the church. And did you put? Did you post it? No, sir. Okay. 
Telegram group is t.me forward slash supernatural ch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let's not walk in darkness thinking we are walking in the light yeah. because we think something is of the devil. And walking in darkness simply means walking in ignorance. So a lot of people are ignorant about a lot of things and they put their lives in jeopardy. They put many things in their lives in jeopardy. But you should not be um, ignorant of these things. You should become more sensitive to these things. A lot of things are happening around you on a daily basis. I wish I can speak about some things, but um, I'm, I'm going to only reserve that for Holy Ghost Academy. Because Holy Ghost Academy, I believe next class, we're going to talk about a few signs, um, omina signs that you can watch out for in your life, you know, around you to be able to help you guard yourself against certain, you know, um, pending or impending um, happenings or events. God does not want you to walk without this information being known. So you must know when good is about to happen. You must know when evil is about to happen. As a believer, as a spiritual person, it's very important. Very important. I wish I knew some of these things like a while back. I would have saved myself from a lot of things. Yes. A lot of things. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory. Well, I'll take two, three questions on the topic but you can go and give the best you can right now to honor God for what you have had. Please don't forget, we are not going live this weekend for any reason. <laughs> Everything will be private. Private. Can you read the question that you see? Yes, so Jamie asked, Papa, back home, people talk about when it rains while the sun is shining. And the other day it happened. Uh, she said it sprinkled rain while the sun was shining. Great right? Omino sign. It's, fa it's a favor. It's a favorable sign. Oh, wow. I will tell you that much. Okay. Okay, well, um, so Evelyn says, In June, you gave me a prophetic act for my husband who had a deep wound on his right ankle. Alkaline water and rock salt. Should I have said that? Um, he passed on September 1st, but I kept on noticing shooting stars. He passed on, on where? September 1st. But I kept on noticing shooting stars. You see, even when somebody is about to die, you know, there's what we know in the prophetic um, that somebody is about to die. And there are certain cases that can come before you as a man of God that you should know that those cases are beyond your capacity to handle, number one. Also, there are certain signs that will also indicate when there is not, there's not going to be an answer or a remedy for the situation that this is actually the plan of God. So all those things can be known. And I, I am deeply, deeply, deeply sorry for your loss. And I pray that the Lord will strengthen your heart and give you the comfort for the days ahead of you. Um, I don't know if you guys had any children, but that the Lord will give them solace at this time. And um, I believe that God is going to um, use this time to also strengthen you and strengthen your faith and the faith of all those that, it, you know, this um, loss has affected. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, so Stacy asked, what about breaking an egg by accident? That is also an amino sign. And um, typically it's not, it depends also on what you were doing with the egg or what you were trying to do with the egg. Um, let's say you were trying to carry a certain prophetic direction with an egg and it breaks. It, it can speak of, um, it can either speak of, it can speak of, of, you know, a few things. But if you're trying to do 
a prophetic direction and you notice that the egg somehow fell from your hand, even though you were trying to protect it as careful as possible, but it still fell from your hand. It is just indicating sometimes that certain spiritual acts you're trying to do, um, there is power in it, but there's a spirit that is trying to stop it from, right. stop you from carrying the act. Mm. So that could be one of the reasons why you would see that that will drop, drop from your hands. Amen. So David asked, what about glass? Like glass cups? Broken glass? Yes, sir. Again, that also depends on what you were trying to do. If you're handing, if somebody is handing you water, and the moment they hand you the water, or they're about to hand you the water, it slips from your hand, you should be careful about what you're about to drink. I'm talking about if you don't know the person ordinarily, if, if it's maybe your child, maybe it's because of them being clumsy. But there are moments you should be able to say there's no reason why this should happen here. Right. So, yeah, and they didn't trip. Nothing happened. It just fell. Something, something is up. Okay. So now the questions are rolling in. So Joe asks, please, Papa, um, there's a ringing or hot sensation in my ear, is that an omen? Yeah, ringing, itching, those are ominous signs. Okay. Stacy asks, Lace, okay, so she asked about the egg again. Um, so David says, is there a meaning behind itching palms? People say it has to do with finances. Yes. Okay. So Melissa says, I had a dream that someone was injected was injected by something in injecting something in my gum and since then I have a gum problem. What can I do? That's a demonic manifestation. That's yeah. an evil attack. Wow. That's an evil attack. When you when you wake up in the morning, just put salt in water and bless it and rinse your mouth with it. You'll be free. Amen. Amen. Wow. Okay, so Nicholas asks, what does it mean when you hit your right foot? And what is the spirit trying to tell you? Those are things you'd have to learn on at Mystics Conference. Get Mystics Conference. Amen. I can't share everything. <laughs> I'll only share the ones I can share. <laughs> David says, if someone has big hands, bigger hands than average, does that mean anything? If someone has what? Bigger hands than average. What do you mean average? <laughs> Just like abnormally big hands, I guess. Big. Um, when you say big hands, it's based on the proportion of their body, not how you see it. Yeah. So, because what you think is big may not be big for somebody else. Yeah. So that's that's relative. You know, we can't make anything out of that at this point. Okay. So Triple A says, I keep seeing the number four 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 every day. Please get one. get Mystics Conference two or Mrs. Conference three. Is it three or two? Mrs. Conference. I think it's two. Two. Yes. Yeah. Genesis asked, what if you find coins all around your house? Did Who put it there? If you didn't put it there, nobody put it there. Oh, me not sign. Uh, so Daniel asked about the phone falling out of the hand. I will not share about that here. Okay. That's Holy Ghost Academy people. <laughs> hmm. All right. So that's all we have for now. Wonderful. Wonderful. Awesome. Praise God forevermore. Praise God forevermore. All right, go and give the best you can. Please do not forget, we are not going live uh, for the rest of the week. Um, no service will be live. No conference will be live. All night will not be live on this platform. It will be on our private platform. So please be informed and inform others, um, especially if you know um, those who are part of um, our online members. Please let let your family know. Tell them that, you know, Prophet has said there will be no live stream on Friday. On the all night will not be live stream. Neither will the um, Sunday service be live stream. Yeah. All that will happen in a private group for just the online people, the online members, um, so that online members can key into what is happening during service. Amen. So, hallelujah. Your best bet is to be in the building as well. So, um, but some of the things that 
I, uh, my father is getting ready to share. <laughs> hey, just come and see and wait and see. Amen. Amen. Make sure you go register. You still have the opportunity to register. And please, the registration for Miracle Sunday will, will, be, will be ending on Friday. So if you have not registered for um, the mir- Healing and Miracle line, you want Pastor Obed to minister to you, you have to register for the Healing and Miracle line. And that will be cut off on Friday. So make sure you register before Friday because you will not have the opportunity to register again. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless your seed and your offering. Thank you for joining us these late hours of the night. God bless you until next time. I'll see you again. Shalom. Shalom.